Hi everyone. In the last video I showed you what we meant by equilibrium in the loanable funds model. And in this video I just want to go ahead and explain to you why we think that's a stable equilibrium. In other words, if you're ever not at equilibrium in the loanable funds model, there's a built-in tendency for you to return towards equilibrium in the loanable funds model. And I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate it for uh, the case where you have a real interest rate, oops, excuse me, where you have a real interest rate that is below the equilibrium interest rate. So R star is the equilibrium interest rate and at that uh, real interest rate the supply and demand curves intersect so quantity demand equals quantity supply. Okay. However, let's just suppose for the sake of argument we start off down here at R1. Okay. Well, if we're not in equilibrium there's only, gonna, only two possibilities uh, for what's going on in that market. There's either a shortage or there's a surplus. So the first step is to try to figure out if there's a shortage or surplus, which means we've got to figure out quantity demand and quantity supply. All right, so at R1, quantities, if I want to find quantity supply, I simply go from the real interest rate over to the supply curve and down, and we'll call that quantity supplied one. Now, if I want to find quantity demand, I go from the real interest rate all the way over to the demand curve and down and call that quantity demand 1. All right, and you might ask yourself, why is the real interest rate below the equilibrium? Don't worry about that right now. All I'm saying is, what if we start off there? What would happen? All right, so if we were in a situation like this where the real interest rate is below the equilibrium, then we're in a situation where quantity demand exceeds quantity supply. All right, now let's think about what that means. So at R1, we've got quantity demand 1 is greater than quantity supplied 1. Okay, So who's on the demand side? That's firms who want to borrow funds so that they can finance investment projects. Who's on the supply side? That's the banks that have loanable funds. And remember we're making a very simple uh, financial sector so you can think of actually the supply side which is the households who make those funds available to the bank. So I'll talk about households who save, right? And that savings is the source of the loanable funds. So what it says is at this interest rate, the amount that firms want to borrow to finance investment expenditures is actually greater than the amount that households want to save. Okay. So this is not an equilibrium. So I claim there's a built-in tendency in the market to return to equilibrium. Why? Well, let's think about it from the perspective of the people who are on the demand side, the firms. That means there are firms who want to borrow who can't, okay, i.e. there is a shortage of loanable funds, i.e. shortage of funds. Another way you can say that is, i.e. there are firms that want to borrow that can to borrow, but they can't. Okay? And the reason they can't is because there's no households or banks out there willing to loan them money. Okay. Now, ponder that for a second. Now I'm going to erase this so I have a little bit more room so I can write some more stuff on here. If you're one of these firms who can't get a loan because no banks are willing to um, loan to you because there's just not enough loanable funds to go out, go around. So you're this firm, you have this fantastic investment project that you want to go ahead and finance, but you can't get funding to do it. And maybe if it'll make it a little bit less abstract if I say the real interest rate down here is 1%. Uh, call it 1%. So you're some firm and you've got a fantastic investment project that um, you want to go ahead and borrow because you think it's going to make you tons of profits. So you'd love to be able to borrow at 1%, but you can't because you can't get a bank to lend to you or you can't find someone who's willing to loan to you. Well, think about what you have an incentive to do. How do you convince banks to give you some of those scarce loanable funds so you can finance your investment project rather than give it to somebody else? And what is the one thing that you have that can distinguish you from everybody else? You can offer to pay a higher real interest rate. So the shortage, so since quantity demand one is greater than quantity supplied one, i.e. a shortage exists, that's going to lead 
some firms to bid up the real interest rate. Bid up the real interest rate. So we now know the real interest rate is going to start to rise. And this increase in the real interest rate is going to do two things. Right? So some firms who want loanable funds because they've got these fantastic investment projects, but they can't get the loanable funds, those firms have an incentive to bid up the real interest rate. So as the real interest rate rises, two things happen. One thing is the higher real interest rate acts as a signal to households. Right? So the real interest rate acts as a signal to households saying, hey, the reward for savings is increased, do more of it. So this increases the reward for savings. Reward for savings. And as the reward for savings increases, then households are going to go ahead and do more of it. So that's going to increase the quantity supplied of savings. In other words, you're going to start moving up along the national savings curve or the supply curve of loanable funds. Okay? So as households save more, notice quantity supplied starts increasing, so the shortage gets a little bit smaller. Likewise, the increase in the real interest rate is going to do something else, and I'm going to have to erase so I can have space to write some stuff down here. The increase in the real interest rate also increases the cost of borrowing. Of borrowing. Now think about what that does on the demand side. There were some firms who had wonderful investment projects at 1% that they wanted to borrow to finance. But if interest rates go a up a little bit to say 1.5% or 2%, some of those investment projects aren't going to look so great. And so those firms who had those sort of marginal investment projects, they're going to say, you know what, forget it. We don't want to go ahead and invest, which means we don't want to go ahead and borrow, which means that's going to decrease the quantity demand of loanable funds. So you're going to decrease the quantity demand of loanable funds and move up along the demand curve like this. <clears throat> so think about what's going on here. You've got a shortage. The shortage means some firms with wonderful investment projects can't get financing that they want. Those firms have an incentive to bid up the real wage, or excuse me, the real interest rate. They're not doing it because they're nice. They're not doing it because they like the banks. They're doing it because the only way they can get the financing is by being willing to pay more than 1% interest. All right. Well, as the real interest rate increases, two things happen. Some for some firms decide, you know what, at 1.5% or 2%, I don't want to borrow. So some firms stop borrowing to finance investment projects that were only, you know, profitable at 1% interest, but at 2 or 2.5% 2 interest, they're no longer profitable. So the quantity demand of loanable funds falls. Likewise, at the same time, the higher real interest rate is acting like a signal to households that says, hey, savings is more valuable than it was before. The reward for savings is higher than it was before. Do more of it. So the increase in the real interest rate induces more households to save. So there'll be an increase in the quantity supplied of loanable funds, and you'll move up along your um, uh, supply curve for loanable funds. Now, the question is, when will all this bidding stop? Well, if you think about it, the bidding's not going to stop until you hit equilibrium. And the reason why it's not going to stop until you hit equilibrium is what's causing the bidding up in the real interest rate. The fact that quantity demands greater than quantity supplied. Right? This is the cause of it. Because quantity demands greater than quantity supplied, there is some firm out there that can't get a loan that wants one. That firm has an incentive to bid up the interest rate. And as long as that firm exists and that firm is bidding up the interest rate, some f that's uh, going to be a signal to households to go ahead and lend more or to save more, and it's going to be a signal to firms that, you know what, maybe you shouldn't um, pursue that investment project that's really kind of marginal. So as long as there's a uh, shortage of loanable funds, some firm's going to have an incentive to bid up the real interest rate. Okay, So you're going to stop at point A. So this whole adjustment process is going to stop when you reach point A. And what's so special about point A is once you've reached there, you've reached quantity supply star equals quantity demand star. Namely, the quantity supplied of loanable funds now equals the um, uh, quantity demand of loanable funds. Meaning, 
Every firm that wants to borrow can find a bank who's willing to lend to them, so they have no more incentive to bid up the real interest rate. And every firm that wants to make loans can find someone who's willing to borrow from them, so they have no incentive to um, alter the real interest rate either. And that's what's so special about equilibrium. It's once you're there, you've got there's no incentive for either people on the demand side or the supply side to alter the price, in this case the real interest rate. And if you're not there, there's a built-in tendency for you to return to it. Now I did an example of a shortage where the real interest rate starts off below the equilibrium. I'll leave it as an exercise to you to do an example where the real interest rate starts up above here, except there there'll be a surplus and that should have slightly different effects. So you should work on that one by yourself.